was drawn to MECFS when I saw my first patient with a full-blown disease. Um, and I could not believe that that person could be making it up. That they could be impaired psychologically and the life that that person had enjoyed before the illness totally destroyed, devastated by this disease. It was not possible that I can put the two things together. But I have felt drawn to that devastation, to that suffering, to the point that I feel that we in the medical profession, and I have said this in public, we owe an apology to you, to the patient, uh, for what you have gone through, and not only the suffering from the illness, but having been ignored. That's the part that I think is tougher. We don't wish illness to anyone, but if someone has it, at least be acknowledged that they have it, and at least be hold their hands and be told, I'm sorry you have this disease, and we will try to do our best for that. And for three decades, it, it has gone like that, but things has changed, and thanks to to patient activism, thanks to organizations like CADOS, uh, SOF and ECFS, and CADOL and Sadie and Allison and, and, and her entire staff. Now the disease is viewed uh, by a growing number of physicians and researchers outstanding as a real illness with a biological basis. Uh, the uh, IOM, the Institute of Medicine, now is called National Academy of Medicine recognizes the illness as important, as needed to be researched, and that has made a huge impact in many places. Why some patients get the disease and others don't? That's a mystery. Why is the husband but not the wife, or vice versa? Why one daughter but not the other, or one son not the other? It's possible that it has to do with the genetics. So that is now possible to be investigated. And all the technology now available to see the brain and see the activity of the brain, that was not possible <coughs> two years ago. And now it is there. So I want to relate to you, not only we have different glasses with which we are seeing the illness and the disease, but also we have all this new technology that with the healthy funding, funding and attitude, we can get closer to where we should have been many years ago. That we are closer than ever to really think down what this illness is. And I wouldn't have a heart to tell you that, that, that if, 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 if it was not real, what I see happening in many research centers, if it was the case, because I couldn't conceive giving you false hope when you have been betrayed and ignored and humiliated for, for so long. Finally, um, I. Um, I, I am sharing this news with, with, with mixed feelings um, because we do have a, a, a group of patients that when we treat with uh, anti-inflammatory drugs, the immune system is overactive to treat with anti-inflammatory drugs, and we control the herpes viruses, there is a group of patients, I have to say it because I feel morally irresponsible not saying it, and so at the same time I feel morally irresponsible saying it, uh, but, but there is that group that gets better, and, and what, what can I do? They, they go back to normal lives, and, and they don't come back to the clinics anymore. Uh, and there is also a, a group of patients that, don't res that do not respond. But even for simple diseases like hypertension, high blood pressure, defined by two numbers, the systolic and the diastolic, you have 20 drugs for, for, for hypertension. Not every patient responds to the same drug. And there are some patients that have refractory hypertension and never respond to that. So why are we going to hold NECFS to different standards than traditional diseases? So I'm grateful to Carol for, for, for having me here, and to John and, and Matt and, and Marcy for, for hosting this. Uh, but I think that hope is around the corner.